I'm Petty Officer Michael Wilkin. In the news, the Pentagon continues to look at ways it can become a lean, mean fighting machine, which means implementing a new approach to financial accountability. Wednesday, Robert Hale, the Department of Defense Comptroller, testified before the Senate Homeland Security and Government Affairs Committee. I believe defense financial management does have some significant strengths. Most importantly, commanders tell me we are providing uh, the resources and financial services they need to meet our national security objectives in Afghanistan, uh, in Iraq, and elsewhere. But I also fully understand there are enterprise-wide weaknesses in DOD financial management that demand an enterprise-wide business response. The goal, to improve the way the DOD manages financial information, including auditable statements. The department is working toward near and long-term goals to support enterprise resource planning systems. A joint jump and team building exercise bring together National Guardsmen from Alaska and Rhode Island. The soldiers jumped into Camp Bullis, Texas during their first joint intercompany airborne operation. With most of the Alaska Guardsmen fresh out of jump school, it provided an excellent training opportunity for members of the unit. The next jump is planned in Alaska in early November, weather permitting they'll jump into the Bethel Flats Rotary Wing drop zone. And for the latest military news, signature programming, and much more, head to pentagonchannel.mil. I'm Petty Officer Michael Wilkin with your Pentagon Channel News Update. Well, it's been two months since devastating flooding hit Pakistan, and the U.S. military continues around-the-clock relief efforts. U.S. helicopters have delivered millions of pounds of aid and rescued thousands of people. Army Corporal Jenny Fisher has an update, update on those humanitarian aid efforts. As flood relief in Pakistan hits its two-month milestone, operations continue throughout the country. Vice Admiral Mike Lefevre visits flood-affected areas from Panama Kill up through Swat Valley. Hey, thanks for what you're doing. Been a 24-7 op. Keep these bad boys flying. General Nagata shows Vice Admiral Lefevre one of the many humanitarian missions being flown out of Ghazi Air Base up into Swat Valley. Some of the missions include Task Force Denali and their Blackhawks airlifting relief supplies up into Swat Valley. From there, they pick up people and bring them out of the isolated areas. Vice Admiral Lefevre also had an opportunity to visit the soldiers at Ghazi Air Base and thank them for their contributions. I can't thank you enough for, for, for being here, leaving your families to be able to do such a great mission for a, a country that's a strategic partner. I know you guys were back in Alaska probably thinking, hey, what's, what's in store for us? Little did you know you were going to come here to Pakistan and do uh, what, what I call is a, a different kind of, hum, of uh, urban renewal. I, I know all of us, some of us had combat, some of you guys have been in combat, but, but to do that now, the kind of shift from combat to humanitarian assistance is, uh, is pretty remarkable and it shows the caliber of, of you all, the, the soldier, sailor, airborne marines we have. After two months in country, the U.S. military has delivered over 11 million pounds in relief aid and extracted 18,000 people from isolated areas. Military officials say there's still much work to be done, and U.S. troops say they're going to stay as long as they're needed. Reporting from Pakistan, I'm Army Corporal Jenny Fisher. Coming up and around the services, road rules. We'll go downrange to one forward operating base in Afghanistan's Kunar province to see how they're keeping the area safe.
Mm -hmm. And he's going to be all drugged up. I have to babysit him. 